Now you gotta give him that hop to it. Hop to it. Hop to it. Get on that thing. You get me. Yo, what's going on? Welcome back, everyone. Today, we are going to be looking at making our very own acrylic light up LED sign. And we're going to be looking at cutting some frosted acrylic as well. I was using the curve tool within Lightburn to adjust some cuts to make this fit without using any glue. I'm going to show you the finished project now, guys, that we're going to show you today. And it is this little beauty. Now, you can probably read what that says, and you probably do know what it's from. And at the moment, it does just look like an orange sign with black text. And I have installed some LEDs, which are plugged in there on the cable. And I am connected through my phone via Bluetooth to that. And I can just press a button on here and turn this on. And there's literally so many different styles I can actually do with this, where it'll just flash on and off. We can just have, like, one color. You can, you can scroll through different colors. There's so many different options you can do with these guys. But it's just a few layers of acrylic all layered on top of each other with one flat layer on top. And these letters are not glued and they are just push fitted in place. Um, again, using the curve tool, which you can just to get the perfect snug fit to get this stuff done. So stick around to the video, guys, because we're going to run through the details on how we made that. Even though I did plan this video beforehand, I did learn quite a lot going through this because it didn't go exactly how I planned. And I did have to make some adjustments throughout the video to make it work to how I pictured it. And I'd like to give a massive shout out to this video sponsor, which again, it's Aeon Laser. Again, I wouldn't have been able to complete this project without the laser they sent me. They have sent me the Aeon Laser Mira 5S Redline series. And the features that come with this laser just made this project so much easier to complete. And the way it just flies through acrylic like no problem whatsoever. So yeah, massive shout out to Aeon Laser, guys. Check out the links down in the description if you want to check out the lasers they do offer. And at the moment, if you do quote Mark AM, they do give you 5% off. I can't wait to use this laser again just to make another one of these lights using all the stuff I've learned going through this video today. And yeah, hopefully next time I should be able to do it without any problems and we should be able to get the perfect finished product on the sign every single time. So yeah, hope you enjoyed the video, guys. Stick around to the end and I'll let you know how you can get your hands on this file as well if you do want it. Enjoy. Right, so with all the bits cut out on the laser, I'm going to be using this 6mm disc of MDF. This is going to be the back piece of the whole light. Um, I'm probably going to have to drill a hole somewhere in there for the lead for the lights to come out. But we'll do that at the end. So I'm probably going to spray paint this black as well. Because this isn't really going to be a feature. This is literally just going to be on the back to house everything. Right, so let's work from the bottom up. It's going to have the MDF disc on the back. Then we're going to go solid black 3mm acrylic there. Then the orange band on top of that. And then another solid black one on top of that. So that's going to be 9mm thick, and that's going to be just enough to house the LED lights we're going to tape to the inside. And then we've also got the transparent strip of orange, so the light's obviously not going to just come out of the top, but it's also going to come out of the side. Hopefully, that's how we're going to work. And then obviously with this disc, it's going to sit on the top, and we're going to inlay the letters in the top of it. So before we do that, let's talk about how we're going to inlay it. So these letters were just obviously cut out of that and they go in and out there very loose with how they fit. That's because obviously the laser beam has cut on the actual line we've asked it to cut out. So on the top plate, obviously we've cut these letters out of the orange acrylic, but I want to inlay the letters in black on this. So these black ones are going to be inlaid and fit in there perfectly. Now we're going to do this without any glue. We're just going to calculate what curve we need and then we're going to obviously be able to just stick them in directly and they should just force fit in there without any glue needed whatsoever. Now, if you don't know what the curve is, I'll go into it very quickly with you now. So if you look at this W we've cut out there, as you can see, it's very loose. And there is, and there's like a hairline gap all the way around where the laser beam has obviously run on the cut line. Uh, so there's always gonna be a gap there. So what you need to do is calculate the difference in size that that's supposed to be. Now, the easiest way to do this, for me anyway, it's just cut out like a simple shape like a circle or a square and run it at like 10 mil or 15 mil or whatever size you want. Just remember what size you're putting that into the software. So I put this small circle into light burn to cut out at 15 millimeters. Well, so I'll get my calipers, set them to zero, got my circle, and I'm just going to measure the width, 14.8. Now, like I said, I put this into the software to cut at 15 millimeters. So our curve is going to be 0.2 millimeters. So there's a two mil difference from what was cut out to the actual size. That's how you work it out simple. Say if you try to cut a 10 mil square and then when you measure it, it comes out 
9.8, you know your curve is 0.2 millimeters. So that's what I've done with these letters I've cut out in black. In Lightburn, I just loaded in the same letters I've cut out a year, but I just changed the curve number to 0.2. So this should allow me then just to force fit these in there. We shouldn't need any glue whatsoever. They should just stay in there. It'll act like it's just one solid piece of acrylic. So first, what I want to do is we'll take the protective coating off this if we can. Now this should be like a frosted orange. And I was hoping it'd be a bit more frosted than this because the LEDs we're gonna put in there, I don't really want them to be showing through as like individual LEDs. I want it just to be like, you know, one constant brightness coming all the way through. Right, so it's done. I had a couple of small mishaps. As you can see, I cracked a bit of the acrylic there and there. I probably should have been a bit more careful when I'd done it but some of these fits were really tight on it. Now these did fit in there, it just took a little bit of persuading. And uh, I didn't film it because I'd done it down on the floor. I had to put them down, I had to put this in between two pieces of MDF and just hit it, and they just slotted in. Now, like I said, we've had a couple of mishaps with it. I probably could have been a bit more careful, but it's not that noticeable. So I'm still happy with how they turned out. I've just got to take the backing off some of these because it looks like white acrylic. Doing something like this where you're going to inlay, you know, different colored acrylic letters into other pieces of acrylic or even wood. Definitely do a couple of small tests first. Now the last bits I've got to stick, as you can see, the A's haven't got the, uh, the bits in them. So these are here as well. And then that one will go in this side. So now we've got to do the base. So we've got the 6mm MDF base. And then we're going to glue, first of all, one of the pieces of black acrylic. To glue the acrylic to the wood, I am going to be using a mitre bond. So we've got an adhesive and an activator. How this works is it's basically like super glue, which you just put all around the edge. You don't need too much of it. A small thin amount as thin as you can do it all the way around the edge now this will dry by itself but I'm going to spray the activator on the MDF and then let's try and place this perfectly on top of there as we can first try because it literally dries straight away So that's our first bit. Now we're going to do the orange band. There's still protective cover on this. And then for the acrylic on acrylic, I'm just going to be using, it's called glass special glue. This just doesn't like smear or leave marks as much as using the, uh, the mitre bond. Make sure you're trying to put the smallest amount on all the way around. Ready? Glue it all in place. And now we'll do the last band of black acrylic. Again, exactly the same using the clear glass glue. That's looking nice and neat around there. So like I said earlier, we've got the solid two black ones. So no light is going to penetrate that. But then we obviously got the transparent orange. And hopefully the light should shine out through there. And then also through this bit. So this bit we're going to glue on top last. Now we need to look at doing the LEDs. Right, so for the LEDs, I'm going to be using this strip of LEDs I got from Amazon. I'll put a link down in the description reason I got these is because I can control it with my phone. 
and I can change the colors. And you can hear, have it activated by your voice. You can play music as well, and there's lots of like different styles you can put on there. And I can change the brightness. So I've got plenty of this to go around. Like I said, I'm probably going to drill a hole through the back, somewhere maybe here, then have the a power cord fed through because this is plugged into a standard three pin plug. Now we could put these outwards like that to go through there, but then we can also double up. I'm going to flip them over and put them then inwards to go. Let's have a look how that looks. Yeah, you see how you can see like the individual LEDs? I didn't want that. I did also buy this stuff. Oh, well, this is like a, a, a diffuser. So it'll diffuse the light so it's a bit softer. Right, so I put the hole through. Now this needs to go that way and then that's going to plug into the connector. Right, so we'll start taking off the double-sided sticky tape on the back and I'm going to start sticking it to the outside of this so the LEDs are going in. I think this is going to be the best look for it. So when we use the rubber diffuser, it should make it a little more softer then as well. I think I'll use a bit of the mitre bond just to put this in place down here so it doesn't move too much. So with these LED strips, you'll see they've got these Every three LEDs it is on this, they've got the, the copper RGB connector. Now you can cut through that, and then the LEDs that are still connected to the power will still be lit. And then these ones coming after it. Oops, there we go. So let's have a look at this look for now. It doesn't actually look quite nice. If I turn... Slight off. It's a bit too bright on the ends. I'm definitely going to need to use the diffuser, I think. So, all this does, it'll just go all the way around. Let's work out how much we need. All right, so I just tried a quick test and I just taped some of this down in there just to see how it looked. And to be fair, the result with this, when it's tightly packed against there, does look a lot better. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and glue this as tightly as I can to the edge. And then once we've done that, then we can put this back on top. And then you should see a nice soft edge going all the way around. Right, so after the first attempt didn't work, where I tried putting them inwards and... You can, you can see the individual LEDs on there. I have noticed if I pull this up a little bit away, then it does kind of blend them into one light. So my plan is going to be, I'm going to have a strip pointing outwards so we can see them individually on there. I like how that looks. And then I'm going to carry on looping this all the way around, all the way in as much as I can. And then I just need to have this come in off there a couple of mil. Right. 
So we've got it working. And obviously I can control this now with my phone. And I have all sorts of different colors going through it. Now I haven't stuck the top down yet because I will show you exactly what I've done to achieve this. So if you remember, obviously the, the LED lights were showing, you can see the individual ones coming through too much. So what I did, take this top layer off. Now we've actually got a, a diffuse layer there. So all this like I'm a frosting window tint type thing. Um, I just cut it out by hand and just stuck it down. And I've also added a couple more layers. So originally we had it with the solid black then the transparent orange and the solid black. Now I've added another transparent layer, that's just clear acrylic, and another solid black one. Now that lifts the lid up slightly away from it, and then that does help. So with that diffuse layer and lifting this up from it, it has helped spread the light across, so it does look like now one solid light. Right, so I'm happy with how this has turned out at the moment. So I'm gonna end the video here. I probably will revisit this at some point and, you know, do a couple of things we have learned on the way and maybe look at maybe trying different LEDs or like a different diffuser maybe, but like I said, we did get there in the end. But yeah, it's got a nice amount of light coming from it. And uh, if you've got any tips or tricks me again, guys, definitely put it down in the comments because this was a very fun project, but... I was kind of going into it blind. I, th I, I had the idea in my head. I thought it'd be easier than what it was. But yeah, there's definitely some sort of a trick to it to get it looking perfect, because this definitely isn't perfect. It it's good, but it's definitely not perfect. So yeah, any tricks or tips, guys, definitely let me know down in the comments. I hope you've learned something here, and I hope there's something you're going to try out yourselves, guys. And if you do, let me know how it went. Any questions, I will try and answer them for you as well. Just put it down in the comment section. And yeah, if you're not subscribed already, guys, definitely click that subscribe button. Because we will revisit this in the near future. We might do something similar with the curve offset as well to make key rings. Something similar to this. If anybody does want this file, just shoot me an email or ask in the comments and I'll get back to you. But once again, guys, hope you enjoyed it. And thank you very much for watching it all the way to the end. We will see you in the next one. Ta-ra, guys.